1687, Sir Isaac Newton introduced the world to the laws of motion. These laws were tested by scientists over centuries, to which they still held. And in 2021, right the hand decided that forces don't exist, therefore Newton was wrong! Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and today we're going to look at a flat earther who thinks that they've managed to figure out the laws of motion. But Planet Walk, I hear you ask, didn't Isaac Newton figure all this out hundreds of years ago? Well, yes, but you see, Isaac Newton was small-brained and thought that forces were real. Right the Hand is big-brained and realised that because Star Wars has a magical thing called the Force, that means that all forces are magic. And no, I'm not making this up, he actually does deny that forces are a thing. So yeah, let's just get into it. So basically I want to rewrite the laws of... the Not rewrite them physically, right? Because that's not, that's not doing anything, that's not going to change them. Damn it, I thought that Right the Hand was going to actually rewrite the laws of the universe to make them better, like getting rid of that pesky thing that says you can't go faster than the speed of light, for example. But like, what people say, so... I'm starting with this first one, right? All things in existence must be physical objects, right? You can't, that's going, that's going to change ever. That's going to change quite a few things right there, right? So now they're going to say light. If light is a thing in existence, it has to be a physical object. I'd question what you mean by a physical object. Is a photon a physical object? If so, then light would definitely be a physical object. So if it's in existence, it's a physical object. If light is in existence, then it's a physical object. If a magnetic field is in existence, then it's a physical object. So here it'll be very helpful to define what a physical object is, because to me, magnetic field and physical object, they don't really go together. And we all know that magnetic fields do exist. So does that mean that a magnetic field is a physical object? It sounds like he's describing a physical object is just being something which exists. In which case, to exist, something must exist. Wow. Because <clears throat> if you would think, how would you program this world, right? If this world is running on a function, it has to be. Now, if you were going to have an object, if something was going to be in this world, it you would have to have code written about it so that the world knows it. There's no code, there's no object. So I have never seen an analogy fail so hard. The correct analogy here is not if there is no code, then there is no object. The analogy is if there is no object, then there is no code. Now if he had have said that, he would have sounded rather ridiculous. If he didn't already. Because as any programmer knows, you don't necessarily have to have everything in objects, especially if you're using something like Python. And you can do a lot of things without objects in Python. Trust me, I know. Uh, motion cannot be created or destroyed, only transferred. Right, so when they talk about this energy, what the fuck is energy? They don't know inertia that. So energy is the capacity for something to do work. And what is work, you may ask? Well, work is basically how much force is required to do something. Now, I know that is a very oversimplified way of saying it, but we're dealing with very oversimplified people here. And also, energy can have many different forms. Just to name a few that I remember from Year 9 science class, you've got kinetic, thermal, chemical, gravitational. There's many more, but I can't remember them all. So when I move this, so see, like the pen is moving, but it's only moving because I'm moving and then transferring the motion. And I'm only moving because I continue to eat things that are moving, right? So that's all well and good. But do you think that a log of wood is moving? Because if you don't, I've got an experiment for you. So what you do is you set up a fire and you start the fire. The striking of the match, yes, will include a tiny bit of motion, but you only need a tiny bit of motion for that. You don't need a whole lot. Now one of the things that you'll notice is you'll get a lot of motion from things like smoke and flames, and all it took was striking a match. This is the idea of why everything is quote unquote vibrating, right? Because everything, technically nothing ever stops moving, right? Like, so this isn't moving, but the water is moving, not quote moving, it is, right? It's, it's evaporating. Okay, now this 
uh, glass actually is moving. So if you were able to list, you know, there would be a noise. Everything has a slight noise because it is vibrating. And that is because motion cannot be created or destroyed. So I partially agree with that because, you know, things do vibrate and that's how we get sound. But there is a problem of equivalency. So the amount of vibration from these things is very small, very tiny. Do you expect me to believe that I'd be able to get a full blown bonfire from these vibrations? I don't think so, mate. Which brings us to rule three, hopefully. Yes, I got it right. Motion, well, there's only three. I didn't write four yet. So before you reveal all your rules, it's good practice to try and write all of them first. Motion can only be transferred through physical contact, right? So again, now if you're going to say that something moved, you must transfer the motion through physical contact to move it. But what about a magnet? I don't care. These are the rules, right? I'm writing rules and th th that all I'm doing is looking at the world and saying the world works on these rules. And these are the rules that I see the world working on. That still doesn't answer the question of what about magnets? You can't just hand wave it away with this is just how the universe works because obviously magnets don't work that way. Unless, of course, you think that the magnetic field is a physical object, in which case any field can be as a physical object. You know, the gravitational field can be a physical object. Works for me, I guess. Now, this is not the end of the video because Right the Hand has actually made a fourth law and a fifth law. So let's go into the fourth law. I wonder what it is. All right, righty here, and we have our fourth. It just kind of came, uh, here we go, all right. An object can only move as far as the motion transferred to it. So I am genuinely curious as to what this actually means. And more importantly, how do you measure it? And I'm saying an object only goes as far as whatever touched its motion, right? So an object only goes as far as whatever touched its motion. Could you make this make any less sense than what it does right now? The, the premise is that things can't move forever because you can't have something moving forever transfer an infinite amount of motion to an object. Well, unfortunately for right the hand here, he's just wrong here because what would actually slow an object down once it's in motion? We know based on what everything we see, things will only go as far as the motion you put into them. So I'm still not entirely sure of what he means because there's been no mention of things like mass or proportions or anything like that. But fortunately, there is an easy way to debunk this. So I've got some broken headphones here and I'm going to hold them here. And I'm only gonna move my fingers ever so slightly and just watch what happens. I probably could have avoided dropping them on myself now that I think about it. But my point is I moved my fingers only a small amount and the headphones fell quite a large amount. So that seems to contradict the fourth rule. Fifth law, uh, maybe a quick, uh, all motion must have an origin or source, okay? Hold on, isn't that just you repeating your second law? So if I move something, then something must have moved me, right? Which must move, so you, you can't just have an object move out of nowhere. Yep, it just seems like that's his second law and he's decided to reword it. So when it comes to what he said, like some of these things are so vague that it's hard to know where to start. And the thing with Newton's laws of motion is that they are actually rather specific. With Newton's laws, if I have an object and I apply a force to it, I can calculate how fast that object will be moving. With right the hands laws, you can't do anything like that. His laws are about as useful as saying doing something will cause something to happen. And in some instances, his laws are just wrong depending on how you interpret them, which is not good for a law. Because yeah, I could say doing something will cause something to happen. And that would technically be a law, but what use does it have? Now, I could end this video here, but there is one thing that I want to point out because I noticed as I was grabbing that last video that Right the Hand has actually posted in the last half an hour. So 
I want to take a quick look at what he said. Alrighty here, this is going to be an easy one to show you how one Newton is a fucking re And he contradicted himself. See, it's relevant to this video. He's talking about Newton. So, why does he think that Newton contradicted himself? First law an object in motion will stay in motion. They believe in space. If you just touch, you bing, you just... Boop. That rock, it'll just go, the object will go and move forever. Correct. So far, we're off to a good start. Now, the sec the third law, though, is equal and opposite reaction. So when you say, I put X amount of energy, whatever, your words. Well, I'll give you your words. You put X amount of energy into an object. Now, how far did that object go? An infinite distance. Now, how much energy would you have to put into an object to get it to go an infinite distance? An infinite amount of energy. Wrong, because the first law of thermodynamics says that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. This is important because movement is kinetic energy. So if I put a bit of kinetic energy into an object and it's in space and it can't lose energy to anything else, what's going to happen? So in this case, there's no way for it to lose energy, so the energy must remain the same, i.e. the energy remains as kinetic energy energy so therefore it continues to move so you are not getting an equal and opposite reaction when you don't put an infinite amount of energy into an object and it goes for an infinite distance that's just not what newton's third law says at all Ooh, did i say that i sent that did i no i didn't did i Ooh. yeah you did i'm glad you're becoming a little bit self-aware about all the stupid shit you say especially when you don't understand it at all but yeah that's enough right the hand for me today because my brain is melting so leave a like and subscribe if you like that video and make sure you ring the bell notification so that you get notified of when i post new videos as always a big shout out to my 20 dollar or more patrons what jesus Hugh Jars, MC Nutkin, Jane Spade, Wolfie, Mori, The Friendly Antinatalist, Graymore Ghost, and Kid Vicious. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon. There should be a link right there. But anyway, I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.